Today, I'm going to talk about Venom. Um, Venom is a fictional character in the Marvel Universe. And in the Marvel Universe, he's called a, a symbiote. So he's this creature from outer space, and he can merge with your body, he goes inside of you, and he creates a sort of symbiotic relationship with his host. In most cases, he's more of a parasite. He, he does grant tremendous strength and great power, but he also sort of, at least in the movie that they made just this last year, he slowly consumes the insides of the person. So uh, first he'll eat whatever food is in your stomach, and if that's not enough, then he'll slowly start to eat away at your organs as well. Now, the thing that uh, we have to understand is that in the world as it is right now, we are all already infected with venom. We're all already infected with this parasite. And it's consuming us. It's consuming us inside all the time. It just depends on the, the degree in which it's able to consume us depends on how much we allow it to take control or how strong we allow the deposit of venom, if you will, how strong we allow it to become within us. Now, one of the things that they pointed out in the movie that they made was that as he is developing inside of the host, the host obviously gets a very large appetite because he's eating their food. Now, spiritually, we can see this with humankind everywhere. As time has gone along, it seems that we have developed not necessarily an appetite for food, but there's been an increase in the spirit of greed, discontentment. We always need more of something. We always have to take more of something. If you think back to a couple thousand years ago, if someone was going to build a house or make a boat, yeah, they went and they chopped down the amount of wood they needed. Or if they were going to go out and um, get food, maybe it was an animal they were going to kill, they would get what they needed. It would be like one deer would feed a whole family for a year or so, they, you know, they freeze them a bit, they would take what they needed. Now as time went along, we developed ways to store more deer, so we have better freezers. So what do we do? Well, instead of just getting one, I'll get ten, or I'll get all I can and store it all up and not even eat it for a while, and now I, I can get more. Now we have better ways to cut down trees, so what am I going to do? Let's go and take out a whole bunch of them instead of what we need. It's funny how right now there's this pervading idea that there's too many people on the earth. There are so many empty houses. There are so many houses for sale. There's so much land that's not used. How are there too many people? There's too many greedy people. That's the problem. There's too much of this venom that is eating what we have. It's eating our contentment because we're allowing it to. And so we want something outside of us and we have this insatiable appetite to get more. There's too much of that. There's not too many bodies on the earth. There's too much of that mentality to where I need more. I've got to get more. There's too much of that. Now, in the movie, one thing that Venom does for this particular person, Eddie Brock, who's the, the main character, is he's not always visibly present. He's usually just inside of Eddie, and Eddie can be Eddie for most of the time. Now, when conflicts arise, then Venom takes over. Then Venom is visibly seen. He, you know, he turns this great big monster and he's covering all of Eddie and you see Venom now. And now he'll eat you or do whatever he's going to do. Now, the thing that I want us to realize here is in the movie version, this entity becomes visibly present during conflict. And if you look at the trend of, of the world, there's always a period of conflict, or, in other words, there's never a period of time that does not have some conflict. And as we come to the time we're in right now, there's conflict all over, all the time. The stuff that we were hearing about in Syria, the whole Syrian war, that's not over. It's still happening. They're not broadcasting it as much, or maybe we're just not listening to the news as much. But all these conflicts are continuous, and these are things that are bringing him up to where he's going to show himself physically. Now, on a personal level, because it, it happens on a global level, but on a personal level, we have to think for ourselves, what situations do I get into that cause that spirit to come up, that cause Venom to show himself physically, if you will. Now, in our world, 
we're not going to, at least the majority of us, are not going to transform physically and look like Venom when we're in a conflict. But the spirit that is within us, there's something that comes up and begins to take over in a sense to where you might say something that you weren't really thinking about or do something that you weren't really thinking about. We talk all the time about how it seems like today people go crazy and shoot someone over the smallest thing. Someone honks you, there's a dirty mattress that you want in an alleyway, a five-year-old is kicking the back of your chair, someone took your seat in church. Tiny things and people are allowing the spiritual people to take over and they're doing things that they regret because they weren't really thinking about it. And this is the spirit that's coming up. Now with most of us, it's not to that extent, but the more we allow that spirit to influence us and practice having power over us, the more power it's going to take in the future. So we want to avoid situations that are going to cause it to come up and take that control. I want us to go to Second Timothy for our first scripture, just to touch on this concept of conflict. This is what is bringing the venom, if you will, to the forefront. Second Timothy chapter 2, we're going to read 23 to 26. It says, have nothing to do with foolish and uninstructive controversies, knowing that they generate strife. Well, that's what Venom wants. That's when Venom comes up the most and shows himself. And a servant of Yahweh must not strive. Rather, must be gentle to all, capable of teaching and patient. In humility, instructing those who are in opposition, since it may be that Yahweh may grant them repentance so that they can come to the full knowledge of the truth. This last verse here says that they may wake up and stop being deceived by the snares of the devil who has taken them captive to do her will. That last verse, that's venom. That's what it does. It gets into you, takes your body captive to do what it wants to do with you. Now, we're coming up to this period of time where we're going to be doing fasting a lot. And that is something that helps in sort of a roundabout way because with fasting, you're going to be hungry and there's going to be more opportunities for venom to show its face, for venom to manifest itself and you to become angry. Now the trick here is when that happens, you're taking that opportunity to attempt to exercise control over the symbiote. You're not just doing it so that, well, I get angry more often and venom comes up more often. Well, no, because that's just going to make him stronger. So you just don't go through it mindlessly. You go through it in a way to where you're saying, okay, I know that he's going to come up, but when he comes up, I'm going to be battling him. This is going to help me to get control over him. Because if I don't do this, I don't get any stronger myself. And if I don't get stronger, then I can't beat him when he does come up. He's going to come up at some point whether you fast or you don't fast. But if I don't train for when he comes up, then when he does, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. So I'm going to make him come up on my terms. I'm going to set a day to fast, then when he does come up, I'm going to battle him. And I might lose, but I'm training. I'm trying to become stronger. I'm going into the battle with the mindset that, okay, I'm going to do whatever I, I've got to do to make sure that I'm on top of this. I might fail a few times, but I'm being proactive in trying to take control of the parasite that is within me. Now, there are two major weaknesses that Venom has um, in the Marvel Universe. One is that he needs a host. So in the movie, the symbiote cannot survive in Earth's atmosphere for very long. It has to get into some sort of body that is functioning on Earth. Now, the dark forces, if you will, or the shadow energies that are present at this time, they can't survive on Earth without us. They have no power without us. If they are surviving, then it's not the great power that they have right now. If you think about, I think it's in Isaiah, uh, it talks about, well, how great you were and how powerful you were. It says, well, after this time, when I expose you, everyone's going to look at you. All the nations are going to be like, that? Seriously? That had power over us? Well, the reason that it's going to be a scorn and it's going to look like a petty thing is because it no longer has the people to inhabit. It no longer has the host. But these spirits, they need a host. They need a mankind in order to create the world they want to create and to survive in the degree of power that they have right now. If they don't have us, they can't do anything. The science manager says, I'm unable to dig. Well, you can't function down here. 
The symbiote can't function on Earth. It needs a host. And these spirits need a host to be able to do whatever they're going to do in the Earth. Now, the second thing is that it can't endure high frequencies. So, Venom has been featured in two movies now. One was Spider-Man 3, uh, where he had gotten on Spider-Man's suit, and there was, you know, the black Spider-Man, if you will. Well, in that one, he was on a bell tower, and when the bell rang, then the suit starts screeching and coming off of him. Now, in this second movie, uh, there's some rock guy, then there's later on some, some other machine that they were using that was making this high-frequency noise, and this was tearing at Venom. Now, the thing, obviously, that I want to get here is high frequency, high vibration. It can't survive with that. It hates that. If you go over to Galatians, it shows that there is this great divide between one type of spirit and another type of spirit. And Venom cannot survive with this higher frequency. In Galatians 5, verse 17, it says the lust of the flesh, or venom if you will, are against the spirit of Yahweh. The spirit of Yahweh is against the lust of the flesh, for one opposes the other. It can't coexist with it. Now, the thing that happens uh, in the Marvel Universe is when this frequency is admitted to the host that is holding venom, it's not as though venom is hurt and the host is like, ha ha, I'm okay. Venom hurts the host while he's being hurt. And the goal here is to get the host to get away from the frequency. He doesn't want it to be near that because hurting him. So what Venom does, he makes you feel pain. So when we're trying to move into a lifestyle that is going to increase our frequency, Venom makes things difficult. He makes you uncomfortable. So you don't like to do the 40 days. You don't like to fast. You don't like to be away from your electronics because those things are of a lower vibration, which is what he loves. He's, he's comfortable around those. He doesn't really need them, but he's comfortable around them. When you start doing things that are of a higher vibration, he doesn't like that. It doesn't feel good all the time, at least when you're first practicing, it doesn't feel good. Why? Because Venom is telling you, hey, that's high vibration. I don't like it. You need to have low vibration and tell him about his parts. He doesn't like it when you take the role of, of humility, if you will, because it's destroying him. It's weakening him. And so when people are doing that, he tries to make you feel bad for doing those things. There was that song uh, by One Republic where he said, everything that kills me makes me feel alive. But then there's another part where he's pretty much saying everything that's the right thing to do, that's the thing that feels all messed up. That's the thing that's, that's hurting him. So what he knows is right doesn't feel good, but what he knows is killing him feels good. That's Venom, because Venom doesn't want you to touch that high vibration, because once you get close to that, he's weakened and his, his hold on you is weakened. If you stay in that vibration, such as in the movie, the, when the people stayed in that vibration, even though they were hurt, he had to come out of them completely. He, he couldn't stay in them. He had to come out of them and get away from the vibration by himself. That's what has to happen. And then the people are no longer hurt by that vibration because he's gone. Now, I want us to go over to one last scripture in Revelations. If this didn't hurt, then it wouldn't require any effort. And it would be really easy for people to get rid of venom. But it does hurt. Alright, Revelations 14, verse 3. It says, And they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. Not particularly, literally, 144,000, but a few things here. They're singing, okay? Well, a song has a vibration. You can't sing without making vibration. This vibration, it says, no man could learn it. Well, what does the scripture say about general mankind? It says, wisdom called aloud in the street, but what did mankind do? Nobody wants any part of it. Well, the reason that people can't learn it is because they run from it with Venom. Venom says, no, don't listen to that song. I don't like it. And people run away and they go with Venom because it hurts to listen to that song. That song is not a physical song. It's not something that you go, well, you might hear something. It might not be a song you're hearing. It's a lifestyle. And the lifestyle changes your vibration. 
it elevates your vibration to a point to where venom can't stay there anymore. That's what he doesn't want. If people are moving to that vibration, he loses hold of them. So that's why he has to make sure that as, as far as it depends upon him, he has to hurt you as badly as possible when you're going there. Because either you're going to make a breakthrough and he has to leave, or you're going to go back. Just like the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt, and what happened? Was it all rainbows and daisies right away? No, they were in the wilderness, and they were starving, and things were difficult, and then what did they want to do? A lot of them wanted to go back to Egypt, go back the way they came. That's what Venom wants. He sees you moving away from him, moving towards a higher vibration of life, and he wants to drag you back. The things that we have to do, particularly coming up during these 40 days, that's a way of life that is going to raise your vibration. Getting away from these digital things is going to help raise your vibration. These things are not bad by themselves, but by themselves, they do lower your vibration. They're of a low vibration. Now, that wouldn't hurt you if Venom wasn't around already. If you didn't have Venom in you already, it, you'd be fine, but we all already do. Getting away from those things is going to raise your vibration. That's why Venom wants everybody on those things all the time. Your entire life is on a screen because he needs to make sure that you are constantly doing something that's going to help him keep a hold of you. The entertainment that's around, the, the negative news that's always on, all those things are lowering the vibration. If you look at entertainment in the 70s and 80s, it's not all that entertaining to me, but if you look at that versus the quote-unquote entertainment, which is also not entertaining to me anymore, that's now, the vibration is very different. Rappers, or, or not necessarily rappers, but entertainers actually smiled back then, okay? Actually had happy songs. Now, particularly in the hip-hop industry, it's like it's not cool to smile mm -hmm. or whatever, okay? You smile and, oh, you're a punk or something, and everyone's got to act hard or whatever, or sing songs about money and drugs and blah, blah, blah. It's low vibration, and that's the most lucrative of the music industries is hip-hop. Why? Because it's a low vibration at this point. Why does Venom need it that way? So that you stay in a lower state. Because once you move to a higher one, he can't hold you anymore. So the point of this message is just for us to uh, realize that we already have this thing, which, which we do, uh, but bring in sort of this, this new concept of this particular character. And to realize that as you move into this higher vibration of life, this thing is not going to leave us instantly and it's not going to leave easily. It's going to make things difficult, okay? It's not going to feel good. So as we are moving up in that vibration, expect the pain, expect him to pull at you, expect problems to arise in your life more than usual because what you're doing, you're moving away from him and he's trying to hold you as hard as possible. But if you're able to endure until the end, that's why scripture says, the one who endures until the end, but well, why does he have to endure? Because something's trying to pull him back the other way. If you endure it all the way to the end, then you're free of him. And then you're able to live your own life without this parasite that's eating away at you. That's all I have to say.